Hello, welcome back. I'm Duncan, and this is my Freddy Reads for this week. Um, it's basically just talking about the one book um, and doing a really uh, in-depth read of the Penguin History of Canada. I'm really just focusing on this, not reading anything else. Um, and last week I got up to about, I think it was 1755, and the um, expulsion deportation torture of the uh, Canadians from uh, East East Coast uh, Canada, what is now East Coast Canada, um, by the British and yeah that was up, that was the, so kind of from, uh, so that was just like the first part of the book so it was, I was talking about the, um, the, the brief uh, part of the brief part of this discusses about um, pre settler uh, indigenous and then first contact, um, first explorations, and then kind of the first settlers. And so, yeah, I went up all the way up to um, the Acadian deportation in 1755, kind of time, um, maybe a little bit on. Um, so, since then, I have read from about yeah 1755 to 60 up until um i'm just i think i'm just around into the 1850s um it's so this is quite a complicated bit to talk about because i really feel like there's so much that needs a much much deeper dive um that it's there's a lot of players there's a lot going on each bit, and it's kind of this is where it's this really thankless job but it's on the grand scheme of things it there might not be a lot there to it's not it's not like a there's a few there is a few battles which are given um some priorities um uh, what's about that i used to talk about the seven years war last time i can't remember now um but yes yeah, so there was a seven years war um which was big and the fact that Britain kind of won that and it really cemented uh, Britain as the the leaders in um, uh, uh, British no in North America and the North American colonies they really uh, pretty much kicked France out and uh, they still had it just a that we still had Louisiana and maybe a couple other territories in America at that point but they're um, they completely withdrew from involvement with Canada and all of the French people, French speaking people became part of the British monarchy, so, subject to the British monarchy, um, which they were okay with in the most part. I think they kind of just wanted to be left alone. <clears throat> they didn't really have much faith in the French government either, um, but they're basically, they wouldn't, they basically caveat was they wouldn't take arms against France. They kind of had a slightly divided loyalty, but um, for the most part, they were okay as long as they were left alone, which in the end they weren't. So, yeah, um, <clears throat> and so uh, yeah, basically um, there is a lot that I think I want to do a much deeper dive. Get books just on the specific parts, but um, essentially there's a lot of a lot of politics, a lot of political maneuvering in this um i think i also have been reading bits here and bits there um where i can and so actually having the like being able to process the information has been i haven't had quite the, the room to do that as well um but essentially okay the book that's quite heavy um but essentially there it there's covers um kind of Britain's less involved with um, governing, I guess. I mean, I, it, okay, so I'll start again. So Br Britain tried to um, have the colonies as just uh, overseas part of Britain, so it wasn't, it didn't have any, any uh, local say no government of its own it was ruled by uh kind of governor generals 
and kind of the church too and especially uh, the French parts were very much um, controlled by uh, the Catholic Church very strong influence which was also a little bit of a problem because at that time Britain was incredibly uh, Protestant and very uh, authoritarian in their Protestancy too um, and so that was a little bit of an issue and ultimately the um, ultimately the taxation without responsible government without representation led to the uh, led to the american revolution and so that had a big fallout and big impact in canada um and so i think basically the, it was around when the american revolution was there was about a, a third of the population of america wanted revolution about a third were loyalist and then about a third didn't really care either way they just want to get on with their lives um but because the the revolutionaries were so so passionate about revolution um they it they basically happened and then after after the the american revolution was successful anyone that was loyalist and it was also a lot a lot of um, indigenous groups, uh, Native Americans, were uh, part of the loyalist forces. Uh, they all basically got, they all basically moved up to Canada um, and were guaranteed land. Uh, there's actually um, there's actually a Mohawk reserve down in Tyendinaga area, um, in between Kingston and. Oh, it's, the other, it's the other side of Belleville, actually, sorry. It's a kind of Prince Edward County area. Um, they, uh, they, were, they came there from uh, America, I believe, and that was because they were loyalist to the British Crown in uh, the American Revolution. Anyway, um, so a lot of Americans came to Britain, um, but even though they didn't... Uh, support the revolution they supported the british monarchy they still had the same uh thoughts on the responsible government as um the revolutionaries they just had a, a different means to a different idea of how to get there um and so there was a, there's a lot of a lot of the politics this is a, a, a this is a, a period of time dominated by politics it's all a lot of it's political meandering um so a lot of their politics was um towards more responsible representative government within the colony that would later become canada um and so there was fear amongst the um british parliamentarians that um they would potentially cause a revolt in uh, uh, potentially cause a revolt in Canada um there was also skirmishes between there was also um revolutionary tendencies radical tendencies within the French Canadian population and um there was a few skirmishes especially uh the more Catholic, as, as more and more um, Protestant Anglicans came into uh, the colonies, um, they, the Catholics, uh, were getting more and more angsty about that, and uh, there were some skirmishes and uprisings there. Um, there was also the War of 1812, where the Americans invaded Canada in hopes to conquering, and they were de kind of depending on the um, <clears throat> American loyalists that were living in Canada now to actually fight on the American side, but actually they were very surprised that either they didn't take up arms at all, or they uh, fought to 
they fought to uh, stop the Americans from invading Canada. Um, and so, yeah, that was a lot. Um, there was... So after that, after the War of 1812, it kind of settled down a bit. There was a little bit more um, faith and dependence on the what is now Canada by the British. Um, the, the Canada exported a ton of lots of timber and uh, corn to uh, the UK, um, and it also. Uh, the <coughs> overseas territories um, like the Caribbean stuff, and then um, there was more of a chain, more of a liberal change in um, <coughs> in the Parliament of, of the UK to go for more um, more of a, a, a free free trade, they want to go more into free trade, and so um, there was originally the Corn Laws, which basically, um, which basically um, said they had to buy corn from Canada, which actually made it more expensive, um, and it was, so it was expensive to buy for just regular people, and then there was also the um, Irish famine around that time, and so they decided to go for um, free trade. Which really hurt hurt uh, Canada, uh, hurt their economy, um, and so there was a bit of that fall, and so um, there was an even greater push for most of the population for more responsible government, and um, as you can see, it, it it's it's kind of quite complicated. There's lots of things going on that I think needs more in depth done but um i've just gotten to the point where um the definitely the the anglican <coughs> anglican politicians of um particularly um particularly uh uh what's we, what's we call him john m uh, johnny mcdonald uh, he's hit the scene now and he's uh maneuvering with cartier to Unites Upper and Lower Canada to into one great big province to really reduce the um, immediate effect of uh, the Catholic French speak, speaking speakers of Lower Canada and trying to diminish their political capability. Um, and yeah, we're we we're, we're just getting close to Confederation, um, which I think will already start kicking off the book, I mean, it will eventually be, actually become Canada, and so, yeah, there's lots more, there'll be lots more familiar history topics than that, and this wasn't a very good, really, wrap-up, but I feel like it very much highlights the difficulty of a one-volume, and the this time period is it's just a little bit more convoluted, a little harder to exp explain, <coughs> and probably just needs a little, quite a lot more birth. And on the one hand, it doesn't seem super important, but it is also, it's a lot of political maneuvering in that will then lead to big change. And so it doesn't always look super important on the big grand scale of things because nothing huge really happens. But everything that happens in this time period really leads to the next big change, and so uh, yes, I think it's it's, and I think it's definitely something that will lead. Like when I want to dive into um, Canadian politics, I think this is a very political um, part of the history, and so I think that will also really I need to really dive into that part. Um, I, I don't know, I'll try and find books that are specifically about this time period, but <clears throat> I also can't think of anything right off my head, so yeah, a bit of research will move off, but yeah, um, hopefully next, hopefully I'm, I'm going to try and really just go for it this weekend, um, this is the first weekend I don't really, 
I have a lot of I have a lot of stuff to do out in the yard, but it's um and around the house, but it's cold it's turned cold again. Um we're not expecting any guests. We had a guest for the past couple of weeks, past three weeks I think. So hopefully I can just really have a good few hours that I can just sit down and read and just uh try and finish it off so then I can move on to my other non fiction in November read. Um so I hope you enjoyed this. I don't know <laughs> what it quite looks like. I'm not going to edit it. I'm not going to edit this video at all. So, um, yeah. Hope you all have a great Friday and weekend reading. Take care.